So, as Emanuela said, I'm a policy officer in the organics unit in the European Commission, the Director General for Agriculture and Rural Development. Um, uh, I'll be outlining to you how the uh, organic control is affected, or is likely to be affected, to be more precise, by the Commission proposal for a new regulation on official controls in food and feed. Uh, as a word of introduction, uh, the situation currently for controls in organics is the following. The control rules are set out by two pieces of legislation already. The general principles and rules are those under regulation number 882 of 2004 on the official controls in food and feed or the overall agri-food chain. And then the specific rules for the control sectors are provided by Council Regulation Number 834 of 2007 on organic productions and labelling, and more in detail on Commission Regulation Number 889 of 2008. This architecture, which is relatively complex, has a number of elements. So in the organic rules, there are some cross-references to general principles and rules in the official food and feed. For instance, the organic regulation says that member states shall set up a system of controls and designate competent authorities according to the general regulation 882. In other cases, the organic rules simply mirror or repeat what is set out for the general food and feed. Just to make an example, for the delegation of tasks to control bodies, the regulation requires an accurate description of tasks, proof of expertise, sufficient number of suitable staff. This is word by word what is in an article of the general food and feed regulation. And then there are some provisions which are specific for the organic operators and sectors on the uh, record keepings, on the annual physical inspections, and so forth. As a consequence of these interactions, sometimes there are official control provisions repeated, and sometimes these are not, as for controls at retail or market level. So what Christine mentioned as a weakness in some member states, there were maybe uncertainties that this requirement to carry out controls at every stage of the production, processing, and distribution chain. Uh, it's not specifically written down in the organics, but it applies to organic as well. Sometimes definitions are not the same. The general rules refer to non-compliance sanctions. The organic regulations talks about irregularities, infringements, serious infringements, prolonged effects, and measures. Sometimes there are overlapping or duplications. So this has created a number of requests for interpretations, uncertainties, and uh, different approaches by member states in interpreting and applying the rules. So now, what is the state of play? There is a review of the organic framework, both the action plan and the legislation that, as was said by Emanuele, um, will have Commission proposals adopted end of March 2014. Uh, it has been a long exercise with a very extensive consultation process with civil society, uh, several stakeholders hearing, meetings of an advisory group, an online public consultation, and control issues have been systematically set on the agenda. So it has been carried out in a very open and transparent way. Simply, at this stage, for me as a Commission official, it is not possible to disclose any information, make any comment, any stance, even to hypothetical questions about draft before the proposals are adopted officially by the Commission in March and published. This is why today I will focus on how controls will be affected by another ongoing review, the Regulation on Official Controls, for which a proposal by the Commission was adopted and published last May, 6th of May. This is the reference 
of the document that has been adopted. Uh, why? Because there were shortcomings identified in the wording and in the application in member states, because it was felt necessary to simplify and to streamline the control rules by integrating all sectors. This was not the case for organic. Organic was already, is already under the umbrella of the official food and feed. Other sectors historically had remained separate, but also bringing together in one set of rules and avoid the multiplication of rules in different regulations with different wordings, timing, and so forth. And to introduce a number of amendments to make it more robust, transparent, and sustainable. What is now the jargon fit for purpose. The state of play of this proposal on official food and feed is the Commission has adopted a proposal. It has submitted it to the Parliament where uh, there is a committee which is lead for its examination. It is the Committee on Environment, Public Health and Food Safety, ENVI, with a rapporteur. It will vote on the proposal on the 20th of February. Another committee, Agriculture and Rural Development, is associated. It has already voted on this proposal, pre um, presented a number of amendments. After this, the proposal will go to the plenary in the European Parliament, and the date is envisaged for 15th of April this year. In the meantime, there are discussions at technical level in the Council with a joint working party. There's a spelling mistake, apologies. It's not the EE, Estonian, but it's a Greek EL presidency. Uh, and work are continuing. The aim of the Greek presidency is to conclude technical examination on a draft preliminary text in the first semester of this year. So having said this, uh, my presentation today, which is of course not exhaustive, given the timing and given the aspects on control, does not, of course, prejudge the final content. It is based on the Commission proposal tabled in May 2013. Amendments have been proposed, others may be, uh, still be proposed, so the text may change. The final content will only be those approved by the European Parliament and the Council, which, by the way, should explain why these are not proposals by EU bureaucrats, because these are proposals on which the European Parliament, democratically <laughs> elected, makes the necessary amendments. Um, what is in this proposal? Um, generally, the principles and the rules for all the sectors in the agri-food chain will be under this text. This does not change anything for organics because, albeit in a not very crystal clear way, this was already under the food and feed. It is now said in a clearer way in the official controls on food and feed that these are controls to verify compliance with the rules on organic production and labeling. But this was already the case since 2007. The specific provisions on official controls in the different sectors for compliance with the sectoral rules are also set forward by this regulation. There are no changes, again, for organic, except from what we call legislative technique. After the Treaty of Lisbon, now legal acts in the Union are drafted differently with main principles in what is called basic act, the act by the Parliament and the Council, and then delegated or implementing acts by the Commission. I will come to that in a moment. So these are the changes for the organic sector, but for all other sectors, uh, stemming from uh, the alignment to the requirements of a treaty. There are a number of improvements that this proposal uh, aims to introduce, and these are for all sectors, including organic. Now, uh, the general principles for official controls I will briefly refer to four aspects um, that could affect organic. What are these official controls? What about competent authorities for official controls in organic? What about delegation of tasks to delegated or 
bodies or control bodies, as is the terminology in organics? And what about mandatory fees that created a number of concerns? Now, official controls are defined in the proposal as any form of controls that the competent authorities perform to ascertain compliance with the rules, the agri-food chain rules. As I said, these cover as well organic, organic production and labeling of organic products. What the proposal says is that should be performed regularly with appropriate frequency, taking into account the risks of the level of non-compliance expected in the different sectors. In the reading and in the wording of the proposal, this does not aim, per se, to introduce any change to the provisions of organic controls. These provisions, these official controls, will continue to be carried out based on what the organic legislation sets out specifically. We could call them eligibility conditions. Who is to be controlled? Why? And in what respects? The focus, according to the wording of the proposal, depends on the rules to be verified and on the identified risks in the sector. So in that respect, there is no shift for organic from what is currently its nature, process to product. So there is no um, intention or provision to undermine in any way the specificities of organic production. Two, competent authorities, the regulation does not change what is the current situation. Competent authorities should be designated by member states in each area, uh, in each of the areas covered, including organic, which is one of these areas. The Commission proposal does not bring any change compared to the status quo. It is member states who were, are, and will be responsible for designating the competent authorities for each area, or authority or authorities, because they are best placed to decide which ones and at which level of the administration. Uh, they may confer official control tasks to one or more control authorities for organic. This is a specific derogation or wording for the organic sector to reflect what is the situation currently. So again, there is no change for organic in the proposal as such. And the delegation of tasks, this is an important element in the existing text of the official food and feed, there were some inconsistencies. The proposal says that it's possible, uh, in, in general, it is not possible to delegate measures uh, to be taken to ensure that operators remedy non-compliance. These are responsibilities for competent authorities. But there is a specific derogation for the organic sector. And this has been introduced to cater for the needs of the organic sector where control bodies take measures in respect of operators. Finally, mandatory accreditation of delegated bodies. The proposals refers to standard uh, 17020 or a, uh, another standard if more relevant. It covers the whole agri-food chain. So the more relevant standard for organics will be 17065. And this may be set out in a delegated act that I will refer. Finally, on the fees, the proposal uh, for official controls retains the general principles that competent authorities should have appropriate resources to carry out their activities and requires the collection of mandatory fees to recover the costs occasioned by official controls. This does not apply to organics. There is a specific derogation introduced for this sector. Member states may but they're not obliged to decide to collect fees to recover the costs occasioned by the controls. Some member states do, some others don't. And this will continue to be the case. So this is for the general rules. Now, specifically, and I will shorten, uh, there is a, an article in the proposal that, will, uh, that provides currently for the Commission the possibility to supplement the rules set out, general, that I referred to, through the adoption of delegated acts so as to cater for the needs of the organic sector. So in detail, the Commission proposes that delegated acts will detail 
responsibilities and tasks by the competent authorities in addition to those already foreseen under the official controls for, uh, for instance, uh, what they have to do on uh, the minimum frequency of controls on operators, on the traceability of the organic chain, delegation of tasks, for instance, to refer to the relevant standard for accreditation of control bodies, reporting obligations, administrative assistance, because this is only envisaged for public administrations in the proposal, whereas we want to refer to the exchange of information amongst control bodies, for instance. And last but not least, the additional measures in case of non-compliance in organics. So this is what will allow taking into account the results of the review of the organic farming political and legal framework in a quick way. Uh, I just close with two elements organic sector will be affected, as any other sectors, by some improvements of the general rules. One, on more transparency. Competent authorities shall, be, shall ensure a high level of transparency in the official controls that they carry out, publish the relevant information on the outcome of official controls, on the non-compliances, on the measures taken, on the penalties imposed. This for accountability as well, uh, towards operators and consumers that we shouldn't forget. Secondly, uh, they may also publish factual outcome of results on individual operators and rating of individual operators with specific conditions. Um, finally, on non-compliance and fraud, uh, all sectors were affected by um, frauds. Um, the proposal requires competent authorities to perform official controls taken into account in addition to the general identified risks, also the identification of fraud, intentional non-compliance or violations uh, through information shared uh, according to the administrative assistance, for instance, or cooperation. Uh, but also uh, to uh, address fraud more effectively Member States shall set penalties in a way so that at least the uh, financial amount, so I mean the fine should offset at least the gain from the fraud. And this gives Member States stronger enforcement tools for uh, fraud perpetrators. Um, that's it. Um, in a nutshell, we, uh, this presentation uh, uh, takes into account what we developed as questions and answers in this respect because we heard questions and doubts and concerns by stakeholders and these questions and answers on the link with the official food and feed proposals is available in the website in the link there. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.